Hey everybody, Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols here with another Tactical Fitness Report. And today we are going to talk about ice baths, good or bad for your training. Um, but before we do, Jeff, welcome back. And uh, let, what, what have you been up to lately? Yeah, it's been a minute, right? We both you and I, <laughs> we pick up right where we left off. But just like you, I'm in, in the middle of my group training and <laughs> it got me thinking Right. I, I, cause I, I talk to the class in the same way you do and build rapport with them. And, and, and I, we always get this thing like with class starts and I'm sure you do too. Like everyone from all over the country kind of shows up from Texas and all these different places, Florida and Virginia, whatever they show up and they don't know each other. Most of them never met. And they're kind of all like athletes, like standing around, like too cool for school, trying to like not be awkward, but they, you know, and then day one passes and then day two passes, day three shows up and all of a sudden they're like, they're BFFs. And because <laughs> what we see, and I'm sure it's similar to you, I'd like to get your thoughts is like, these guys come from all over and they've never been around people that really want to train the way they do. And no one really understands them. Even sometimes families like you're a little bit off. Oh, well, yeah. then they show up with these guys and they're like, oh, my people. And then how, like, that's that question is like, look and see, you see it and how they see it. But, they don't know, like, look at how it improves the training environment. And like, that's like, it'd be a great topic for us to cover. Like, okay, great, Jeff, but why? Like, how does it do it? What do you see? What does Stu see? We yeah. see a lot. And I'd be like, we'd love to share that with you that's guys. That's a really good idea. Cause you know, when we are coaching a group of people that all want to go spec ops, you have just found your home. You have just found your people. And it's, there's not many like you out there. Yeah. And, you know, I, I grew up, you know, I, I would have to work out with three different people in a day and organize it in a way that, you know, I, I would work out with a guy that's really good at running. That's all he did. Then I work out with a guy who liked to swim a lot and that's yep. all he did. Then I work out with a guy who liked to lift and I go lift with him. <laughs> yeah. That was my <laughs> college. I did the same thing, right? I'd go work out with the track team, the throwers or the short dis mid distance people. And then I go work out with like the secondary, the drills they do, like their running drills after practice. I go swim or I'd work out. It's you're just trying to build a process, you know. Yeah. These guys get thrown into, they get I guess thrown into a group of people where they're not in comp competition really. Like if you're competing for a space on a basketball team, you only got maybe 14 to 16 spots, you know. Like you know, obviously there's only five on the court, but there's always. When, when guys yeah. show up here, they still have that residual mentality, but they're like, whoa, 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 look, wait, there's space enough for all of us. We're in this together, you got guys baby. like they're air force, you got army and you're all like, wait a minute. Like we're really all truly on the, the same team, like team yeah. America. Oh, it's, I love it. Cool. I love it. Yeah. So topic right. it's coming. <laughs> so where, where can they find out about you? Performance first uh, US. social media, Instagram, yeah, social yeah, media. Jeff CSCS. Yep. Performance yep. And first, then US. performance com. first. There it is. That's, yep. that's where and you then, find me and the questions and comments will come. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right. So uh, ice baths, good or bad. I have uh, seen a lot of people doing ice baths and I think a lot of people do them for the right reason. And I think some people potentially do them for the wrong reason and potentially dangerous reasons. Right. Cause anytime I agree you're with all that, <laughs> anytime you see, um, an exposure to extreme temperatures, there is a potential danger you know, for hypothermia, hyperthermia, um, you know, if it's heat. Um, so I always start off with the risks, but then there are some also, also some benefits. And this is nothing new. You know, the ancient Romans and Egyptians used ice and snow for you know, muscle pain and, you know, certain things like that. So yeah, prophylactic where, reasons, you bet. Yeah. So where are you on? I guess there's different types. So we got cold showers. Eh, you got cold water immersion. Yep. And then you have an actual ice bath. Right? Yep. Where, and then you, then you have, then you can even have contrast, right? Those contrast are like the baths, big yep. four, right? Those are yeah. kind of like, or then you could throw in cryo, but cryo is the total exposure of an extreme that's really not performance beneficial like there's there with everything just know this this is like where we've had to make a decision for a business it's benefit and it's non-benefit and the demographic we work out we we train with like you it 
it really puts in a category of there's certain benefits and certain things we would never even get involved in, you yes. know, within this, within this contrast ice bath conversation. So, you know, I, I think that let, I guess I'll kind of start kind of organizing it this way. Me personally, like there, you know, we could say here are some, like I went through a bunch of websites and I went through a bunch of research and basically I limit it to like, Hey, what are the top five or six proposed benefits? And, and here's, here's kind of what they are, right? So you have reduced inflammation, you have like uh, muscle soreness mitigation. That's the other one we kind of talked about. Um, it says aids in muscle or exercise recovery, which there's yeah. a lot of stuff. So, so let, we'll, and we'll go through Definitely. each one of these kind of um, lowers core temperature like that. So I don't see where the benefit really is for that, except for only if, illness you, have high, and some things. Only if you have a high core temperature. Yeah, exactly. Right. So like I'm trying, so this is weird. You, it's, it's, it's where people will classify benefit is it, it's really context driven. I think that's what we're going to spend most time talking about is context of these things. So you guys can make a decision. The next one is supports immunity, which is a real stretch, but we can, we'll talk about that. The other one is improves mental health, which is such a stretch, but I'll, but we'll talk about where that stretch comes from, I think. So, right. um, but yeah. so then there's two things that for sure happen, what I consider negative, which is really will put me into why I use it and how I use it or why I don't. The two things that we know for sure that's going to happen on all of those with extreme temperature, whether it's a cold shower, it's too cold of water immersion, it's too cold of a contrast, and the ice is just ice. It, I don't ever really see a benefit in ice, no. especially for the demographic we deal with, because two things happen every time you reduce the ability for the muscle to repair. Right. And you reduce the ability for the muscle to grow. You completely stop or stifle those entirely. And so I go, OK, there's hormonal benefits. There's proposed benefits. There's mental health benefits. But I go, hey, listen, from a business standpoint, the people that we treat and train the most are people that are in a very extreme physical strain. And then we, we are gonna throw some pretty cold temperatures in there. So what I don't wanna do is add a component of what I consider recovery that is absolutely 100% of the time gonna reduce muscle repair and reduce muscle ability to build muscle. And they're kind of one in the same. Like I don't, we don't need bodybuilders at Buds, but we really need the ability through this difficult training you guys do we need to be able to repair muscle really readily and, and, and cold ice contrast, all that is going to almost entirely stop that. But we'll yes. definitely talk about some of the benefits for sure. But, and there are some, you know, but that's, that's kind of where I, where I stand or where we stand as our business. Yeah. I would say, you know, inflammation, muscle soreness, overall fatigue can all be benefits from, from ice or sh I should say cold water, cold yeah, water. Yeah. yeah. I, I have found that, you know, after we do, especially a summer workout, we're hot, sweaty, it's humid. Yeah. Right. That context guys, listen to his context. Yeah. Yes. And, then, and then we go to the pool and it's not cold. I mean, it's relatively cold to my body temperature, you know, it's 75, but that is enough to bring my body temperature down to a point where I actually am no longer fatigued. I get that second wind. I've always yeah. said half, half of my fatigue is body heat related. You know, yeah, you yeah, can, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You yeah. bet. You can bring There's that body temperature down. There. Yeah. You like bring think about guys, like if you, if you've run like an electric heater in a big space, your electric bill goes way up. Like what does it have to do with human body? When your body is producing heat, and excess the amount of energy the amount of caloric energy it's using to cool itself yeah. is profound and so you, you get yourself into cooler not cold water because yeah. you're gonna we'll talk about the cortisol piece which is really the linchpin for a lot of this stuff and, and other hormones for sure but you're right like and that's the context guys like that contrast can be very beneficial be, so the research that i've read is a pretty robust the problem with research and contrast and cold baths and ice baths you have to look at the demographic of who's being tested many times it's sedentary college 
or middle-aged men and women that have no background with these or with physical extremes and duress, right? It's, and, and, and it's okay. It's okay that we're not comparing ourselves to those people and you shouldn't yeah. necessarily. It's not a negative thing, but, and that's where we got to start looking. If you're looking at contrast baths or ice baths, look at who it's being tested on. There are, there are research out, there is research out there that's being tested on athletes on various modalities. Those are the ones with age and sort of context that have a bit more value. So just when you start looking at hearing contrast, your first question should be, all right, you're advertising a benefit. What research is saying that benefit? What was, how are they tested and how old were they? Like just basic stuff. Sure. Like, cause you gotta say, yeah. hey, if it's testing 65 year old men and women that are, you know, have no training experience, putting them to physical extremes, it's likely they're not gonna, their exposure to it will be far more negatively critical than someone who has really good aerobic base and has been training. You know, the, the physicality of an athlete is far more um, resilient, we'll say. All right, so let's do this. Let's get into who should use them and who shouldn't. There we go. Okay, yeah. There's, go, you go first. Dude. Who, How about who that? have you recommended using them for most, most readily? I would say... Um, high volume athletes, guys that are doing a lot of work, um, you know, just, to, and they get their body heat up and they can kind of cool it down a little bit. And that, and I'm not saying the ice, in fact, I'm almost a hundred percent against ice yeah. and mainly for this in our world, there's really no purpose for it because Bud's water is going to be at its coldest. It's the perfect temperature. Probably yeah, 55 degrees. 50s. Yeah, yeah, 55 degrees, which is a therapeutic temperature, I would call it, not 100%. a potentially dangerous one. Now, it is potentially yes. dangerous if you're in there for over an hour just sitting. Because the context of frequency yeah. and duration matters when we're talking about ice and cold. And that's, that's you're right. The research that I've read robustly, the ones that are benefiting sport world and the contrast world, is not below 61 degrees Fahrenheit. And, that, and here's the key context. We had this some of the guys we've trained in past with from Trinidad and Tobago. So way Southern Caribbean, like the 61 is way too cold for them. But if you're from Northern Minnesota or South Dakota hmm. and you've been, it, 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 you really do have to take them to context because point. your nervous system is so finely tuned into where you live. Yep. It yeah. is. Yeah. And you so, know, another, another one too would be groups that are, um highly active in a short period of time yep and then have to repeat another bout of training yeah whether right? it's whether it's combative sports uh tournaments you, you know two a day footballs or... in the heat you're right uh, yeah. you, like the yeah. context that you use is is really the best i think for our demographic it's sure. hey we got a long run a long swim or a long physical bout of something and there's a, a core temperature that's being raised and hydration isn't isn't offsetting that fast enough because the day temperature is also raising and the inflammation. And so you yeah, bet. And this is those. chronic. Yeah. This isn't day one for these guys. This is week two at Buds or week six with Stu or week five with me, where there's an accumulative stress factor that's come up. And what we're doing is we're we here's the deal. Here's one of the real kind of rules for rules of thumb for benefit is. If you can't stay in the water, we'll say, well, what is comfortable? Like, cause we got to define all these things for the person. We say like, if Stu and I were going to jump into a cold water bath, he and I should be able to be able to be still, have a conversation, be cool, be cold. But when you start shivering and chattering and you don't have the ability to converse, we know your nervous system is in a reflexive state. And we absolutely 100% know that cortisol is starting to be released which is the, like I mentioned before, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. like you start getting cortisol and that's, that's a, that's not something that you can ever mitigate really except, except for long duration, constant, like a Wim Hof exposure, sure. like you over a long time. And that's where they say, Hey, there's a mental health benefit, but not if there's a cortisol release. Right. And that, that long-term mental benefit only comes from long-term chronic use 
choosing the appropriate cool but not overly cold temperature, then over time you can drop that temperature a little bit to drive a little bit more of a therapeutic response. But as soon as your body receives stimulus from cold enough water that it needs to start releasing hormones to offset it, right? In the negative, specifically cortisol, you are now regressing. True. Now, like, are you yep. pulling blood during? You most certainly can, and there are places that do do that to make sure they're not in a, a in a negative reflexive state when they get put into a contrast state. It's measured. That's how we know this does it. Now, how, how there's a negative reflex. But so I think that, you know, all of these negatives that center around cold really only center for me around ice. And you kind of already said yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, ice, the, the only air quotes benefit that ice can provide and the time to use it is this, is if you have a serious wound that needs immediate occlusion or you have some pain, it can be prophylactically added before you get other medical attention. And the real extreme of life-saving benefit is I was in a, in a space where someone got th shot through the leg, through yeah. and through tib fib, and they packed that wound with ice and it saved his leg. So like, that's a crazy extreme, but you go to major league Yankees, the Orioles, the Bennywood, NFL, whatever team, you, you don't see people icing their arms and knees anymore. There's a reason because you don't heal muscle, you don't heal tendons, and you don't improve the tendon health by growth and repair when you add ice. So be very careful if you're icing yourself prophylactically. Yeah. Yeah. That, that whole uh, rice um, has been <laughs> just proven for over a decade now yeah just you know, remove the eye the compression yeah. elevation and rest is ideal it's 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 perfect yeah um but the the ice piece is you know and that's like you know like we we kind of before i jumped on here Catherine's like hey like this is a great point for you to bring up like to the community like hey people what happened to cryo like that big, like, oh my God, everyone's cryo, everyone cryo. And it was a scam from the beginning. You know, the, now the research that was driving the cryo, right, was specifically cryoing just your hands. Mm. It was at Stanford and it was in conjunction also with the research of carbohydrate um, sort of uh, uh, metabolization of, are you going to drink it? Are you going to swish it and spit? There's a lot going on with that study. But at the end of the day, they couldn't reproduce it outside of the hands. Mm. And that's where the cryo, whole cryo world came from this study on hand temperature uh, change. And it were, also were they, trying these, to, were they trying to reduce body temperature? With yeah, the it was try, they were trying to get up. Like, it's like we go, you know, in a very high stress environment where people need to be drinking carbohydrates because of the membrane of the mouth is so so uh sensitive for osmosis you can put sugar water in your mouth swish it around spit it out yeah. you get the you get the glycemic drive you get the insulin uptake um you can get a higher performance value out of it without because problem with drinking hard carbohydrates is a totally different topic your body doesn't uh, doesn't digest carbohydrates in excess of seven to eight percent where car like gatorade is like 35 percent carbohydrates in some cases so where does this have to do with ice so you can swish this water around and spit it and get the benefit of insulin uptake. But you can also, to drop the core temperature, the thought was, hey, because standing on a cold concrete slab, doesn't matter how warm you are, if you're standing on a cold concrete slab barefoot, you're going to get cold. Sure. So it's like, hey, how do we in a hot environment, a military environment, how do we drop core temperature without getting ourselves covered up? So the thought was, what if we put our hands because right, our brachial artery comes through here, mm -hmm. and our intervention for our veins, all of our wrists, our this is where our thermostat basically is yeah. of our body, and our necks, our wrists, our brachial artery inside our thighs. So if we basically cool the area in which there's a lot of blood flow changing direction, the thought was, hey, we can we can drop the core temperature. So they were using cryo, but they were getting a CNS benefit. They were getting basically down regulation. They weren't getting up regulation of cortisol. So everyone's like, cryo is amazing. It's total recovery, but it was just the hands. Right. 
So again, long answer, short question is like, you know, it really, there is a real benefit to contrast, but what we see is Catherine always says, my wife, she's like, you guys are just so extreme. You don't think to work to the middle ground. You guys jump right to, well, cryo's good. Why don't I just cover myself in ice head to toe? You know, and like, that's gotta be good. <laughs> it's, yeah. That's pretty atypical of us formers or currents, you know, just go big. Yeah, that is true. Um, I, you know, something I'll say too, that if you're an easy gainer, like as I have aged, you know, I can look at food and look at weights and I will put yeah. on weight. So I yep. am now an easy gainer. You know, it, it may be beneficial for me to do some cold water therapy to avoid that uh, hypertrophy experience. You bet. In, in gaining in gaining muscle mass if i'm trying to reduce you know not reduce muscle mass but i mean there'll, there'll be some people that are trying to reduce muscle mass if yeah. they're a 280 pound football player trying to get down to 200 pounds there's a mass that has to be reduced it's it's a mix of mass and you know muscle mass and uh and bulk but still um that may be another good group of people that it may be yep. beneficial for yeah i think the big one is is like it, it is it's context of you and i like okay so you and i have the capacity to train at a very high level but i would venture to say that we like when we train with our guys we just are highly efficient yes because we become that not because we're special and hey it's doing jeff we're so efficient better no 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 that's one of the things that you and I practice more probably most prolifically is being efficient. Yes. And so if my goal isn't to, if I'm efficient, I'm breaking my muscle down to a way that's, that is e much, much easier to adapt to and recover from. So yeah. exposing you and I to steady chronic contrast baths after we get done training we don't get the negative cortisol reflex either because we're also used to it. And also you and I have been removed from the, the sincerity or seriousness to get through training. We've done it. Sure. Right. So looking at the con, the contrast is like, or the context is key because you go, there might be someone that's really, really ready trained and they're not, but you wouldn't know until you have that conversation. I guess what Stu and I are probably trying to do is avoid adding more stress to our athletes that may not be quite ready for it in context, not person like, Oh, they'll never be ready for it. No, this current context, it's not a good idea, but when you're in these environments and you're creating adaptation, yes, definitely you could do that. And that becomes like just a conversation that gets built on rapport from the coach and, and athlete. You know, something I've also seen in our group of people that we train you know they also get into this cold water to test their metal not necessarily to help them recover yeah. or inflammation or fatigue they're actually doing it to get used to cold water yeah and then why like what's what's the mechanism dangerous. right it's stress like yeah. why are people using cold water because it's intensely uncomfortable and it so that's hurts. the question so from that intense uncomfort, that intense discomfort, what's the reflex biologically, right? It's not good. And that's yeah. the thing we go, okay, it's hey, good, maybe not. It's, it's not. it's not beneficial for the adaptation in our demographic. And I think that that's, that's really what it comes down. It's like, you know, we really can find benefit for these, these ice baths and contrast. We just, it's not ethical for us to blanket statement and say, Hey, you should do it because yeah. you guys are going to get really freaking cold already. It's not like you're, you need to get used to it. What you, you need to do is understand its benefits and what its limitations are. You can get cold in a swimming pool. You know, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I was sitting there talking to a guy uh, yesterday and I was, I was done swimming and I was just sitting there and I probably sat in the pool for like 20 minutes talking. And by the time I was getting out, I was, I was starting to shake. shake. You know, it it yeah. does not take long for no. you to get cold. So, you know, cool water. Absolutely. Cold, super cold water, ice water. 
you know, I, I think you're just playing with some chances of really not helping yourself. You bet. You know, if, yeah. If you, go, if you go too cold, that, that, that's the big thing for me. Yeah. Um, I think you guys should try it. I think you should, you should set it up for parameters of, of benefit. And I think that most of you will find a benefit from a contrast. You know, where can we do this? You, know, you can do it in your house, but the ideal place kind of do it is in locker room settings and pool settings where you can have a cold shower on or a hot shower on, and you can go from a cool pool to hot shower or hot tub to cold pool because the parameters, yeah, what, what, what do. we're doing is mm. it's the temperature difference that is creating the, the positive hormonal catalyst. It's not, it's really not the extreme cold. You, we, his, here's the deal. If, if Stu and I were to package a, a cold immersion benefit sort of seminar, mm. like we really have to have a thermometer and we really have to like ask questions about where are you from? Like, what's your experience? Have you ever had a negative if, have you ever had a neg negative experience in water, in a pool, in a lake, in a river? Because if the person has ever had an emotional negative response to water, mm. when they get into that cold water, I don't, the reality is, is your emotional state's going to come through and you're going to dump a bunch of cortisol into your body. And that is a stress re response that you, and here's the why we doing this too. It's, we, we, it's okay to learn to use contrast. We use contrast to learn, the, to feel the benefit and to gain the benefit. What you don't want to do is just keep kicking yourself in the teeth, right? By getting yourself in cold water, thinking this is emotional benefit. This is emotional benefit. No, 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 no. The emotional benefit really that should be advertised is setting real boundaries, right? And that's what's, what's real difficult. Yeah. It's not difficult to throw like my, my 15 year old son can fill a tub full of ice and get in it, but there, but that's not the benefit, right? Right. You know, you have to create parameters for guys um, to, to receive the benefit and you've done it before you've done the contrast and you get out, you feel truly invigorated. You know, the largest organ of your body is your skin. Right? Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to really get the skin, get your nervous system to respond to that huge organ in a positive way, not a negative way. Right. There, there can definitely be a dopamine hit for you. You, you bet. hundred percent. Yeah. Especially you as, yeah, if it's not like yep. pure shocker to your system. Yep. And almost here's the last thing too, is like, which is the real insight. Like I was going to a bunch of websites, looking at all these benefits and every single one of them almost listed mental health. But if you yeah. look at the mental health side, almost every one of the mental health benefits, when you read the research, the mental health benefit was either accompanied with the mindset meditation piece or a breathing piece or both. Yeah. So we're saying, hey, uh, get in this cold water and then meditate. And then we're going to measure you and go, look at how good contrast works. Like, no, it was, it was all the meditation, really. Right. That, and that's what we keep every time we talk about mental health, someone's using this breathe stick or this contrast bath. And then <laughs> when you keep going down that road, it ends up being some aspect of breathing or meditation really is going to drive what you're looking for. So you guys can keep getting in contrast breath, getting in the contrast baths and ice baths, get out of breath hyperventilate and then get out reacquire good breath and get that dopamine hit and go yeah i did it no you just were really cold you got super out of breath and then you got a dopamine hit once your nervous system re-regulated good job you just you just went and got punched in the face to get a cookie that's what you got you got punched in the face and then by that ice and then you're like good job man here's a here's a glycogen dump right mm -hmm. once you get your breath back here's a cookie that's what you get so you, you can come to my house. I'll punch you in the face and give you guys a cookie and we'll get the same benefit from ice bath. Damn. There we go. <laughs> I'm not really going to do that. I don't have any cookies, but I will punch you in the face. <laughs> well, tell me this. Um, people who should not do them. Now, yeah. I, the, the ones I've read, you know, potentially dangerous ones would be. You have, you have high blood pressure. I said blood, if you're on blood pressure medication, problems. Yeah. You have any heart issues, completely stay away. If you have any circulation issues like Renaud's or anything else, 
Um, I would really, 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 really avoid getting in there if you're diabetic too. Mm, like that's yeah. a real problem and a real risk. That's so here's, point. and this is where the, the problem is folks is the big health issue is there is a health hormonal benefit, but if you put someone at risk, like the ice, ice is not a funny thing. Ice will immediately throw someone into a cardiac issue if oh, you're yeah. not careful. So in the interest of being healthy and motivated and tough and all these things, like there's nothing more sexy and tough in my mind than telling the truth and doing it right. So yeah. don't, don't be a gimmick. Don't be yeah. that guy either. You, you know what? Every time I, I hear about a new, or, I mean, this, in this case, it's old, it's an old form of muscle recovery. Um, is um, I always go back to, is it better? than getting a good night's sleep and eating well and right. knowing how to breathe yep is if yeah. it's better than those three i will listen you bet everything yep. else is just you bet. is just where everybody spends their money some people you spend bet. ten thousand dollars on these tubs on a cryo yeah it's crazy <laughs> i know people that have cryo in their house right so and that is funny you mentioned that the last piece about the benefit right is it's AIDS and exercise recovery. We're talking about, you talk about health and sleep. So the AIDS and, and aid and exercise recovery is hinging on the statement of, oh, you get vasoconstriction, vasodilation that forces nutrient rich blood back into the muscles. Okay. Nutrient rich blood only is for people that are eating right and sleeping right. So if you have, you've been eating processed food primarily for your diet and you jump in this ice bath yeah. and you created a cortisol response and now your body floods this disease tissue this diabetic heart disease tissue with unnutrient un, like non-nutrient rich non-oxygenated blood it forcing it into damaged cells when you have a cortisol spike mm. like that is a recipe for extreme cellular damage and free radical issues. So wow. I'm not interested in flooding my body with free radicals and problems with my nutrients. So if you really want to get any sort of residual hormonal benefit that is possible with contrast, Stu hit it nail on the head. If your sleeping is poor, we know your cortisol is up. If your diet is rich in processed food, we know that you just basically vasoconstricted and vasodilated unhealthy veins. Yeah. Yeah. So Ooh. this, we, we, we have a, again, I'm guilty of it too, is we in the fitness world tend to put fitness before health and wellness in contrast and ice bath for me is health and wellness before performance. Mm. So pay attention to what it is because Yes, there's a benefit to be had, but you got to be smart about it. And so you can get the benefit because there are, there are benefits without a doubt. But just understand context a little bit better. Yeah. The one thing I wanted to bring it up is, you know, it's very trendy right now. I mean, everybody's, you know, jumping in cold water, ice water, breaking ice and then getting into it and, really? you know, and, and then you see the gurus like Wim Hof, you know, who've been doing this all his life. You know, he is, you know, and, and I get what he's trying to do and, you know, teach people about the mind. Body it's a bigger picture than ice, you know, but it yeah, really is. For him. Is, a, is a very bigger picture. And, you know, I think, I think, unfortunately, some people who aren't really that informed with the, with what ice is actually doing to their body can really hurt themselves in a way that you know, is really yeah. unnecessary, especially in our demographics too, right? Like our demographic, we're like, we're fortunate as coaches. I think we are, we get so many truly authentically motivated men and women. And these men and women at their, at the risk of their own detriment will take the advice of somebody trying to do right. If, if someone, even me has given advice you know, that's why I'm really trying to be very clear about the advice I offer around these topics because people might just glean on some of the, the short-term verbiage and go, oh yeah, ice is good. Like I heard Jeff say ice is good. But this is where being a student is so important. Like especially in the tactical space, guys, you, 
We are asking you as tact as professional soldiers when you're our soldier to be mindful of all those things, right? We're asking you now also to be as professional soldier going in to be mindful of your health, right? Because yeah. if you get mindful of it now, you can really use its benefit mm. in context when you get into selection, get through selection, and you can you have these things available to you. Yeah. And you know, in our in your I guess people who are listening to this who might be heading towards selection programs. And if that selection happens to be on a beach, um, you know, on the Pacific, you know, you can actually use the cold water of the Pacific for some quick recovery, Perfect. inflammation. Uh, I mean, all it takes right now, think of it this way. All it takes is to look at pictures of Hell Week graduates in the winter versus Hell Week graduates in the summer. And you can yep. see the amount of inflammation that is, you know, the Present. difference in between yeah. the, the colder water and the warmer water, yep. um, mainly because, you know, it's easier to get them cold. So they put them in the cold water and it's, they just run them more when it's not easier to get them cold. And so exactly, the inflammation yep. is, is definitely there. So, you know, you, you can definitely find useful ways to use cool water, cold water even, but. You know, my if if you're breaking up the ice to get into it, my suggestion is uh, yeah. get, a, get away from it because sometimes that, that ice can get up against your skin really tight, and if you're in there for too long, next thing you know, you're you're flirting with frostbite, you're yep. flirting with hypothermia, and that's just going to set you back versus help you. Yeah, yeah. The one way we like can I close out this the way we use it. Here's a way I prescribe it for our guys. I can't do it for the class now because the water temperature right now is about 52 degrees. So once the water here in Virginia Gate Beach gets to six, gets to 61, once it gets to 61, or that's it might good. be 50, it gets to 58, but that's 75 degrees or 80 outside. So once the water is at 61, what I have my guys do is after a lot heavy volume. Stu already mentioned it, lot heavy volume day. I send them to the beach. I have them walk at about thigh high water, just above awesome. the knees. I make him bundle up and stay warm up top. I just have them walk in the water for two minutes down one way. I have them come out and walk back a minute or two, get in. They just do loops. I have them do loops from, depending on the temperature of the water, starting at about 22 minutes of total time of loop. So into, nice. in, into out a minute, into out a minute. And they're, so now we have locomotion also with contrast. So I keep them in there for 22 minutes. Um, if, it, the, if the water temperature gets above, like it starts getting warmer here in the summer, we'll keep them in there for 30 just because it's cooler. You I know? like that. That's a great so idea. That's what we do. We walk loops. Yeah, you know? that's perfect. perfect. And I learned this from the Australian Institute of Sport. They have a, a contrast lazy river in the recovery center. It's awesome. a lazy river. They have two of them. One's a cold and one's hot. So they get a little floaties and they float based and it takes a certain amount of time to float around the cold. And then they, it's a nice little ramp. They walk out and they walk into the hot and they float for their two minutes. They get out and they're prescribed. You're going to do it six revolutions, eight. And so we were there the rugby guys were there. So high volume work. Yeah. Right? A lot of those guys were doing it. We got to do it with them. And it's like, Oh, there's a real, and then the person that ran it, her name was Shona Housen, Dr. Shona Housen, the recovery. She was director of recovery and sleep at the time. And I just got to pick her brain and understand timing and context. And we just kind of reproduce that loop, that two minute, one minute loop. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's been, it's been helpful. And it, it's the same context. We say, Hey, when you go to buds, you know, like you may not want to get in the water, but when you get in the water, if you're not too beat up, try to switch that brain to more of, Hey, this is therapeutic. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good way to put it. You know, anyway, when you're out, it's there, hard like, to switch this, over, this but is you therapy. Can try. This is therapy. Yeah, Absolutely. it's therapeutic. Yeah, it's supposed to do this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All right, Jeff. I think that's pretty good. I think, I think uh, so. I think we've covered it all, or as much as really. Again, it's the summary is it's context, guys. Look at the context, and and, and then benefit. You find your benefit that way. Yeah, yeah. It, it can be useful, but it can also be dangerous. So be careful in how you use it. Uh, you bet. Jeff, you guys can check out more over at uh, performancefirstus.com, Jeff's website, and also Jeff CSCS over on Instagram. He's posting some really cool stuff over there with stuff that he does. You can find me, Stu Smith 50, over on Instagram and um, stusmithfitness.com.
So until yeah. next time, we'll do something again. Maybe we'll talk about finding your people. In finding your tribe and training. Spec Ops their people. trading. Spec Ops trading. That might be a fun yeah. one to do next time. So until yeah, next we'll do time. Until next time, folks, have a good one.